I would like to make a declaration of interest. There is no financial interest uh, in any organisation that is talked about in this, uh, this, in this discussion. Likewise, uh, I've received no sponsorship from any of the companies involved. And I would like to say that when I talk about complications, uh, none of the patients were mine. <laughs> Okay, stenotomine is established as the standard approach to the heart, really, and for years now we've been fixing the sternum with wires. It's been very effective, I suppose. The first stenotomy was described in 1897 by Milton, but it didn't really become more popularly used until uh, around 1957. We've established that the approach is fast, uh, safe, and inexpensive. However, there are some complications, and some of those are very uncomfortable indeed when we have dehiscence and uh, deep sternal infection, bony non-union, it can be a very difficult problem to manage. And of course this is associated both with increased mortality for patients but also the increased morbidity of significant pain problems. So sternal pain is often seen with clicking and instability. Happily in our own institution in Papworth we uh, regard it as an uncommon complication but of course from time to time we do see it and images such as this one which is uh, a very nicely reconstructed and rendered uh, CT scan show the measure of the problem with the two halves of the sternum pulling apart frequently this sort of situation can be complicated by transverse fractures which make simple rewiring less than adequate. There are recognized risk factors for this problem developing some of them are patient-centered factors and other of course are surgeon-centric perhaps technical errors being amongst uh, the highest of those factors. So in an attempt to prevent this, there have been descriptions through the years, this one dating back to 2003, to try to reinforce the sternal closure that we've all used. This paper was very interesting because they put a couple of extra wires in, particularly in the lower part of the sternum, which is the area that the instability often tends to develop in. One interesting finding in this study was that figure of eight wires, which I know some people use, um, are not superior to simple wires in terms of preventing uh, malunion. Once uh, there is infection or complete dehiscence, the treatments uh, sort of escalate in severity and of course plastic surgery forms the final uh, refuge for us all with complete debridement of the sternum, perhaps pectoral muscle flap intervention uh, and uh, also perhaps a mental uh, flap usage. However, there are some alternatives. Sometimes, of course, it's possible just to rewire it. I guess you're all familiar with the Robicheck technique where the uh, transverse wires are uh, reinforced by longitudinal lacing of the costal cartilages. More recently, that's been refined with the placement of longitudinal plates, which can be screwed to the sternal fragments. And of course, this offers tremendous uh, additional strength if there are transverse fractures through the hemisternum. Now, uh, Bob Jeffrey contributed to the uh, literature in this subject with this rather nice little uh, letter discussing the issue of stress magnitude between the two halves of the sternum. And I think there's been increasing focus from the bioengineers on the stresses that uh, come to play uh, between the two hemisternum. Uh, in normal breathing, there's about a 50 Newton stress. In normal coughing, that goes up to around 300 Newton force stress. And in severe coughing, that goes up to around 1,500 Newtons. So there can be some very significant distracting forces on the two halves of the sternum. And it's clear that a, a single wire wrap may not be adequate. So people have tried to reinforce that in the first instance by using perhaps double wires. And uh, this is a, a rather nice uh, closure system manufactured by A&E Medical, which uses a double wire um, uh, system two wires or a wire loop swathed into one needle. It goes uh, parasternally, uh, parasternal position and then brought up into uh, the handle, which you can see below, which has a, a rotating uh, component to it, an eccentrically placed handle, and you simply wind the wires up until they're tight. Once you start to double wind the wires, you've gone far enough and can just uh, uh, cut the wires in the traditional way. Useful for the lower four intercostal spaces, but not so good for the manubrium sternum, which is still managed in the same way. It is said to confer some additional strength, but I have uh, no experience of this myself. Another attempt, which is a little bit older to spread the load a little bit more evenly, 
was the introduction of the metal Sterner band. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that device, but um, we used it for a while in Papworth, I think about six or seven years ago. Uh, the distributor has stopped bringing it into the country now, and uh, we have abandoned it. But it was a simple uh, metal strap, about three, four millimeters in width. It was on a needle in the same way. It looks a little bit like an ordinary Jubilee clip, and it was simply ratcheted tight and then cut to size. Quite a neat technique for uh, using uh, a, a wider band around the stern. However, I suppose the modern day version of that is uh, just about to hit the market here. It's called the Zip Fix. It's manufactured by Synthes, and it's a plastic band instead of a metal band. It has the same ratcheted um, feel to it. There's a head, uh, a locking head, and a predefined cutting notch. <coughs> You simply cut the needle off, having passed it again in a parasternal position, feed it through the head and pull it tight. Very like the zip uh, fastenings that you'll see for cable clips and uh, other things around the operating room. We have no, uh, no data on outcomes from this, but again, in terms of uh, theory, it looks very good. It has a tensioning tool and it will also amputate. It comes in a fancy box, so it's guaranteed to cost some money. <laughs> but uh, it should be very straightforward to place. And as I say, we're, we're familiar with the technology. We use it all around the place uh, in daily life. The additional benefit is that uh, although we can't use it around the manubrium, we may be able to stabilize the manubrium for these patients in other ways, perhaps using titanium plates. Now another technique that has found some use recently has been the tension band sternal plating. An example of that is uh, this talon, so-called, which either has, uh, it, it comes in two different conformations, either with a single claw on each side or with double claws on each side. The idea is that they pass around the sternum in the intercostal spaces. This was a quite nice paper that came out from uh, Duke University where they looked at 45 patients who'd had um, sternal closures with the sternal talon manufactured by KLS Martin Group. The, um, it was successful. There was no real problem with it. They didn't have infections and they had no dehiscences. So it may be something that offers uh, something for the future. But you can see from these uh, illustrations uh, from their paper, the placement, measuring, assessment of the sternum and so on is actually quite uh, involved. And when it comes to the tensioning, uh, there's the additional requirement of a, a tensioning tool for the two halves of the sternum, which will approximate the sternum before the plate can be fully tightened. Again, I have no personal experience of it, but um, it may be something that finds use for some of the more obese patients and other patients who have uh, risk factors for dehiscence. Uh, the next few slides have been provided for me from Simon Kendall in South Tees. He's had some experience with these thermoreactive clips. Uh, they're made from nitinol. Uh, they uh, are malleable when they're colder than 10 degrees centigrade. As they warm up to around 27 degrees, they re recover their normal shape, and they don't set until they hit about 35, 36 degrees uh, centigrade. Uh, again, they're said to have some benefit. Uh, they're expensive when you look at their cost compared to standard wiring. Uh, but they may reduce the mechanical sternal dehiscences because they're less likely to cut through or break. The reason they're less likely to cut through is that they have some uh, capability to deform with respiration. And they have, of course, a five to seven times larger surface area in contact with bone than the standard uh, sternal wire. There has been a prospective randomized study which showed that they were effective and reduced the sternal dehiscence rates. Again, they're not particularly straightforward to apply. Uh, you need to use some kind of approximation device for the two halves of the sternum. You need a special applicator which mounts the clips and allows them to be placed uh, from the anterior aspect of the sternum. And it's very important you put them in the right way up. If they go in the wrong way up, they can fall out. Okay, and these ones actually... Uh, 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 became uh, broken as a result of that. Uh, in Simon's experience, he's used them in 160 cases. He's had two reoperations for bleeding, which seems remarkably good, and um, uh, says that uh, he finds them very useful for, again, the high-risk patients. 
On now to transverse plate fixation, which is really relatively recent. Uh, I think this device has only been available in the UK for about the last three years. It uses titanium plates. It's derived from a plate and screw system that the Max Fax uh, surgeons have used for a long time for mandibular reconstruction. It uses locking screws, so the um, tension on the screw is not in the bone, but is in the plates. And the plates uh, come in two halves, one for each side of the sternum, and are held together by a single uh, pin, which can be removed rapidly, allowing easy separation for re-exploration should bleeding become a problem. One of the fantastic things about this is that although they're uh, placed from the front and they require uh, mobilization of pectoral flaps on either side of the midline, um, they do not require extensive retrosternal dissection. And if you find yourself going back into a patient with patent grafts, that's of course very useful. Um, it minimizes risk since there's no intrapericardial dissection involved. Uh, here's, here again is the kind of kit. Uh, you see the uh, double thread on the screws, some of which goes into the bone and the other part which locks into the plate. They come in a variety of different sizes and shapes. The stellate ones up at the top are useful for the manubrium and the others are very useful for the, rib, for the ribs and uh, intercostal spaces. There's a couple of bending tools and cutting tools which allow confirmation of the long plates in uh, three dimensions and there is a certain art form to getting it right. You have to measure the depth of the sternum so you know which length of screw to put in so that it doesn't perforate uh, the viscous behind. And there is a template to uh, practice both your bending and to size the plates appropriately. Here's an example of such a sternum uh, preoperatively. <coughs> you can see there are transverse fractures in the left half of the sternum. Uh, some of the wires had pulled out. I think this was clearly a technical error. And uh, this patient ended up uh, in front of me in considerable difficulty some way down the line. Uh, we used the system effectively and uh, used uh, four plates across the ribs and, and the costal cartilages and a stellate plate on the manubrium sternum. Um, here's the kind of result you see radiologically. And again in, uh, in the CT reconstruction scan. So very satisfactory uh, fixation of the sternum. Uh, as I say, it avoids the extensive substernal dissection. It provides mechanical stability and effective pain relief. And in the short to medium result, it's certainly successful. A development of that has also been the matrix rib fixation system. So you can buy pre-curved, uh, pre-shaped plates for rib reconstruction. Here's a young fellow who came off his motorcycle. These slides provided by Sean Barnard for me. Um, smashed in the left side of his chest, uh, CT scan, pre-intervention, shows the multiple fractures, placement of, uh, of the rib system. It has both an extra, uh, extra bone system like this, which lies on the outside, but there's also an intramedullary component, which helps to provide additional rigidity. And you can see very agreeable radiological uh, results from this kind of fixation. No discussion of sternotomy closure now is complete without mention to some of the newer biopolymers, biocompatible polymers, uh, both in terms of kryptonite cement and um, hemostatic agents, which can be placed between the two halves of the sternum. The kryptonite clearly is an alternative to wire fixation and will actually provide cement fixation of the sternum. Again, experience is uh, relatively light in the clinical arena, but it does seem to have some promise. Um, the use of other absorbable hemostats, perhaps impregnated with antibiotics, may also be something that will help to uh, reduce infection and dehiscence in the future. However, for most of us, this is still the way forward, I suspect. And of course, you need encouragement to uh, keep practicing everything with due diligence and with due accuracy. Unfortunately, by the end of the day, it can be rather hard work pushing these through a very, very uh, tough sternum. So perhaps some of you may have seen this device manufactured by Sutratech. It's a battery-powered wire plate.